Content delivery networks, or CDNs, are, at their most basic level, multifunction services designed to deliver the content on your website to users fast. There are many CDNs out there on the market these days, some of them offered as standalone services like Cloudflare, Fastly, or Akamai, and others directly by the big cloud companies themselves like Google CDN or AWS CloudFront. No matter which company you choose as a CDN provider, they all offer one service in common, and that's the ability to deliver certain parts of your website content faster than if it were served from its origin where you actually host it. Essentially, when your site loads in a browser, all kinds of other stuff like images, CSS files, JavaScript files, and any other static content is fetched behind the scenes. If you don't have a CDN, all this content needs to come from your server. This, as I'm sure you can imagine, can put a heavy strain on your server and take a long time to be delivered, especially if the files are larger, if they're like geographically far away from the machine that's making the request. When you introduce a CDN into the mix, requests for these individual static files are instead requested from the CDN network. The first time these files are requested, the CDN fetches them from your server, just like any other normal request and delivers it to the requesting machine. But the next time someone requests the same file, the CDN doesn't request it from your server and instead delivers it from its caches. The benefits of this are twofold. First off, your server now only has to serve these files occasionally since the CDN is serving it for you. Second, the CDN provider will distribute your file to many edge endpoints all around the world, so the amount of time it takes to be delivered is dramatically shortened. So that all sounds pretty cool, but how does it work from a technical standpoint? There's actually a couple different ways that CDNs are set up depending on which one you choose. Some CDNs work by giving you a completely different domain names specifically for delivering your static content. For example, if you had myawesomewebsite.com, you may set up static.myawesomewebsite.com. The static subdomain points to the CDN, and then you instruct the CDN to fetch the content of your actual site and serve the content from its edge. Usually in this scenario, when someone loads your site at myawesomesite.com, you would then change the URL of the static content like images and CSS to point to the static subdomain. This allows your dynamic content to serve directly from the server while all the additional assets are pulled from the CDN network. The other way some CDNs work is by actually proxying your whole website, but only cash the things that are cacheable. In this scenario, you would appoint myawesomewebsite.com to the CDN network, and then the CDN provider would evaluate each request and determine if that request should receive a cached file or it should be passed to the origin machine to get content served from your server directly. No matter which way your CDN provider operates, there are certain things to look out for before you just flip the switch and start enjoying the benefits. Mainly, you need to make sure that the CDN knows how long to cache a file and if it should actually be cached in the first place. Every CDN provider has slightly different ways to control their caching rules, and most of them offer some sort of control panel for making custom rules. But most of them will also honor the cache headers served by your origin server. Now, caching headers are a completely different topic worthy of another video, but essentially you can specify how long a file should be cached by setting the headers in the HTTP response. When a CDN sees these headers, they then know how long the file can be kept before fetching it again. Finally, while every CDN is primarily a way to deliver content faster, some CDNs offer more robust features than that. For example, Cloudflare has expanded their offering of basic CDN into a full-blown application firewall that allows you to not only speed up your site, but also protect it from searches and traffic and even block common exploits like SQL injection. If you'd like me to dig further into the features of the different CDN providers, leave a comment below and let me know which one. Okay, so CDNs sound great, but are they expensive? Well, honestly, that all depends on what you're looking for. While many of the CDNs I've mentioned here have a cost and often charge based on the amount of data consumed, they aren't necessarily necessarily expensive. For example, AWS CloudFront charges by data processed. If you don't have a lot of traffic, you just don't pay a lot. But probably even better than that, Cloudflare has a free offering for websites that offers a subset of their total features. You may not get everything they offer, but you do get the basics of DDoS protection and content delivery from the edge, which is what most basic sites need anyway. If your site grows, just add more features and cough up the cash. All right, I think I'll leave it there. If you like this video, leave a like. I really appreciate it. Until next time, happy coding.